Napa Valley, one of the most famous wine regions in the world, boasts land so valuable that a single acre can cost over $500,000. And that's because it produces some of the finest wines on the planet. But beyond its luxurious reputation, Napa is home to more than 400 wineries and employs over 44,000 people. It draws in nearly 4 million visitors each year, despite accounting for just 4% of California's total wine production. So what makes Napa Valley so special? Let's first examine the region's geography. As always, visit the resources below if you'd like to explore the topic further. 50 miles north of San Francisco, we arrive at the southernmost tip of Napa Valley, entering the town that shares its name, Napa. From here, the valley stretches north for roughly 30 miles, ending in the charming town of Calistoga. This 30-mile expanse is cradled between two mountain ranges that act as natural barriers, shielding the valley from extreme weather. To the east, the Vaca Mountains protect the region from the scorching heat of the Central Valley, while the Mayacamas Mountains to the west block the cooling marine breezes from the Pacific Ocean. This unique climate from the mountains and landscape is what gives Napa a unique terroir, which is a French term for the sense of place that growing conditions impart on a wine. This blend of sun, mountain shade, and coastal fog keeps the vines from ripening too quickly, allowing the grapes in certain areas to develop rich, complex flavors. And it's not just the weather, Napa also benefits from a wide variety of soils. Thin, rocky soil in the mountainous areas makes it ideal for growing Cabernet Sauvignon, while river-adjacent vineyards with silt and clay produce Sauvignon Blanc and other varieties. Now, Napa Valley's story began long before it became synonymous with wine. In fact, for 10,000 years before Spanish missionaries and colonists arrived in the 1800s, the Wapo people lived in the region. They had a different name for Napa Valley, Tallahalusi, meaning beautiful land. The Wapo people weren't just inhabitants, they were also stewards of the land. They implemented controlled burns of the dry brush in the area, helping shape the fertility of the soil for future agriculture. By the time the 1830s came around, settlers had arrived and with them, European rootstock grapevines, which would officially kickstart the valley's wine industry. 10 years later, the California gold rush brought wine-loving Europeans to the region and Napa's potential for winemaking became clear. Charles Krug, an ambitious pioneer, opened the first commercial winery in 1861, which is still in production today. Napa's vineyards nearly faced extinction in the late 1860s due to a devastating infestation of root lice. These destructive insects, which attack the roots of vines and other plants, arrived in Napa and caused widespread devastation, wiping out over 80% of the valley's vineyards by 1900. The crisis wasn't confined to Napa alone, though. Because the region used European rootstock, which had no natural defenses against the pests and was spread across the globe, no region was safe from these little pests. It took decades for the entire wine industry to recover. While Napa Valley was still recovering, the U.S. entered its prohibition period from 1920 to 1933, and this dealt another major blow to Napa's wine industry as alcohol production was banned. However, some wineries in the region were able to find a workaround by producing wine for sacramental reasons. Napa's rebirth began in the mid-20th century, when its wine industry was officially protected after the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, or ATF, created the American Viticultural Area System in 1979. Modeled after similar European systems, AVAs are designated wine-growing regions with specific geographic boundaries that produce unique wines. Napa Valley was one of the first, along with Missouri, to be recognized, ensuring that any wine labeled Napa must be made with grapes grown in the region. This system helped elevate Napa's prestige and guaranteed that the valley's name would be synonymous with quality. Today, Napa is known for producing high-quality Cabernet Sauvignon, which makes up 40% of the valley's total wine production. Chardonnay follows closely behind. But the vintage that truly put Napa on the map was 1997. That year's growing season was long and mild, producing complex wines that set a new standard for the region. It became Napa's defining vintage and shaped the style of wines going forward. Fast forward to 2023, and many vintners say Napa's 2023 vintage was another landmark year due to plentiful rain and a lack of extreme weather events. Karen McNeil, author of The Wine Bible, called it as perfect as any Napa vintage in living memory, and suggests the wines will only become more impressive with age. Now, the story and history of Napa Valley go back centuries, and if you would like to continue exploring, then visit the resources below, and if you found this video insightful, consider subscribing to our channel for more content like this.